Hello, I'm Juliette Foster and welcome to our ADSW studio. It is day four of Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week, a global initiative championed by the UAE and backed by the clean energy powerhouse Mazda. Well, today we're focusing on innovation and youth. Innovative technologies and youth engagement are both key to reaching net zero by 2050. And the UAE has been at the forefront of engaging and supporting young climate champions and technologies. A pre-COP26 summit in Glasgow, celebrating 400 young people from around the world, all committed to climate action. We are committed. Programs in the UAE are helping to support, reward and educate some of those young people. Mazdar's annual Innovate exhibition showcases young technologies being developed around the region, like the regenerative batteries manufactured in Jordan by XLX and solar energy storage solutions from the Palestinian company Sunbox. Mazdar's Youth for Sustainability helps to identify tomorrow's innovators and leaders, accelerating sustainable development by combining training with real-world experience. The Y4S Skill Up program trains the workforce we'll need with the skill set they'll need to develop and implement new technologies. Skill Up courses have been rolled out in fun video game formats and Y4S aims to reach up to 1 million young people by 2030. As Zambia's Natasha Mwanza said at the 2020 World Economic Forum, The older generation has a lot of experience, but we have ideas, we have energy, and we have solutions for the now problems and the ones that are coming up. So Investing today in tomorrow's leaders and tomorrow's technologies, a key part of our global transition to clean energy. Al Shamsi is an engineer with the Al Ain Distribution Company, a subsidiary of the Taka Group. She's also an expert in water resource management and she sits on the Taka Youth Council. Welcome to the studio. It's very good to see you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here as well. Excellent. Now, look, I mentioned there the Taka Youth Council in the introduction. What is Taka itself doing to inspire young people to get involved in that energy transition conversation? Uh, actually, in Papa Youth Council, our aim is to empower the youth to become the future energy leaders. And our mission is to be a, a, a fundamental building block for the energy sector as well as for Taka. And this is done through building the knowledge of people, uh, through expanding their knowledge, uh, ex uh, mentor them to achieve the exit, as well as Taka as the energy champion in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. Uh, and we are working together with the sector to be the energy transition leaders in the future. Why is it so important to involve young people in this transition conversation? Yes, on the one hand, you can find the leaders of tomorrow, but why should they be involved beyond finding people to lead things forward in the journey? You know that the young people have the energy and they uh, emphasize that they will be the future leaders. So that's why they would like to be participating and involving. They bring in the table the energy uh, from their capabilities building and since you are empowering them they will be trusted to be the future of the energy leaders in the future so that's why they will keep developing their skill uh, accepting the challenges toward the sustainable future for the company for the country as well as for the world you're an engineer by training so i can understand you being involved obviously from that perspective but beyond the engineering challenge what is what is it that's really inspired you to get involved? Why is it important to you personally? Uh, you know that our leaders in the UAE and in the country is uh, giving us like a trust to be the future leaders in all the sectors, not only in the energy sector. So uh, this is like a commitment for us to word and toward the energy transition, toward the sustainable future. So we need to give back something for our country. And this is, can be done through our hard work, accepting the challenge to accelerate the future of the energy transition as well. Do you see the Youth Council as perhaps a model to 
similar institutions elsewhere in the world? Because clearly you've built this up, it has tremendous traction, it knows where it's going. And do you feel that perhaps there are other organisations in the world with a similar aspiration? They may not quite know what to do, but they can say, aha, this is what they're doing in Abu Dhabi, that is a template for us. Yeah, actually the Youth Council is aiming to target and to check who's the talented youth in the organisation, because if you keep searching for the talented youth within your organisation, it will support in having the best of them, best practices initiatives. Also, this will be supporting the other young generation once they are come to the company and on the organization in the future. So once you are building a, a people or a targeted staff within these capabilities, they will be developing it for the other generations as well. Okay, so not just generations here in Abu Dhabi, yes. but also the rest of the world too. Yeah, actually in Taqa, since we are a, a, a global company, we are uh, starting with Abu Dhabi youth who are UAE-based uh, um, UAE based employees, but as well as we are targeting to involve the youth within our group, especially within Ghana, within India and within Netherlands youth. So uh, this is like our future plans to be involving the youth within our Taqa. Fantastic. Well, look, Excellency, we wish you the very best in what you're doing. Congratulations going forward, and I'm sure that you'll have an even bigger story to tell at the COP28 too. Thank you so much for joining us. Young people and fresh new ideas. Innovation is a huge part of the equation as we transition towards cleaner and greener ways of sharing the planet. Wind power is one of the most accessible renewable energy technologies. Ben Backwell is the CEO of the Global Wind Energy Council, the GWEC. When at the Atlantic Council's Global Energy Forum this weekend, he sat down with my colleague Christina Millman, who asked him about the global appeal of wind power in the run-up to COP28 in Dubai later this year. Well, we represent the private sector um, of one of the largest and most relevant uh, renewable energy technologies um, and we work closely with our colleagues and friends in the solar industry and green hydrogen and, and really what we do is we try and help governments um, on how do we implement the energy transition, how do we get to climate targets using the technology available. Um, so our role really is to mobilise um, private sector capital investment in order to help uh, governments meet their energy climate targets. Now you're saying it's the largest sector, uh, what is that based on? Why wind rather than solar, for example? Well, no, I mean, actually it's wind and solar. If you look at something like the IEA uh, net zero scenario, uh, but they have wind and solar playing the predominant role in the electricity system by 2050, right? And in fact, it's, it's, it's actually when you get to output, it's pretty similar amounts. So wind is slightly more than solar. Solar has to install a lot more. So solar is actually a, um, a, a bigger industry in terms of um, megawatts or gigawatts installed um, because the capacity factors are, are lower with solar. So you need to install more solar to get the same effect. But we, yeah, we work with all the technologies really because it's going to need all the technology. So we work very closely with our friends in the solar industry, green hydrogen, um, hydro, hydro power, I mean, it's going to require a whole suite of, of technologies to get it forward. Into. What trends are you seeing in the wind industry and how, how do you think they'll support energy transition? Well, I mean, the important thing here is what's available right now and can it scale? Um, and again, if you look at available technologies, it's really wind and solar that can step in the gap. Um, for electricity, to create green electricity. And then you need to look at the other sectors like transport and aviation industry, um, where there's an increasing um, emphasis on, on green hydrogen and how do you scale that up. So um, really for the energy transition part, um, those are the kind of key technologies. And then you have all the kind of enabling things that you, you need around it as well. So what are the council's priorities then in the run up to COP28? Well, we really want to make sure that this COP is a implementation COP um, and it's, it's, a, it, it, it's based around practical out, uh, outcomes and it's based around really how do we face the challenges that, um, that, that we have ahead of us on the energy uh, transition. This COP is the global stock take, so it's really um, where the presidency and the countries and the parties will, will look at where we are in terms of meeting our climate goals and the, and the findings of the previous COPs and IPCC, um, and then you know, come together around some kind of action plan collectively. So it's really, really important that this COP is not a talking shop, that it's you know, practical um, and it's about implementation. And the discussions we've had with the um, UAE presidency have been really positive and we think that 
um, we can see that they're really laser focused on, on, on producing these outcomes. So yeah, we're quite encouraged um, from what we've seen so far. Uh, yeah, we feel that there's a sense of urgency both with the hosts, but also with the, the countries that are part of this. Um, so yeah, it's getting down to business and it's getting down to actions, uh, not words. Great, thank you very much, Ben Backwell. It's time now for a roundup of the day's news from Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week. A consortium of philanthropic business and government leaders is meeting this afternoon. They're drawing up a plan to unlock Africa's economic potential using renewable energy. The new African initiative will deliver turbocharged renewable energy deployment and unlock green energy manufacturing on the continent. A recent report by the same group suggests that with targeted investment, Africa could become a leader in renewable energy energy manufacturing. The second day of ADSW Summit is now underway and the run-up to COP28 in Dubai later this year is at the top of the agenda. During the summit's opening speeches, the UN's Climate Change Secretariat's Executive Secretary Simon Steele called the next COP28 a momentous opportunity. The UAE sits in the heart of a region dramatically impacted by climate change one which cannot afford anything less than a total transformation of business as usual. Repeating Dr. Sultan's words from his first speech as incoming COP president, COP28 will transform systems and accelerate 2030 trajectories through game-changing partnerships, solutions and outcomes. We need everybody at the table to achieve this. Everybody. And Youth for Sustainability's three-day event also kicked off this morning. Y4S, a youth-focused Mazda initiative, has trained more than 25,000 students in skills key to a clean energy transition. Hundreds of Y4S youth were also trained to volunteer at this year's ADSW. We have a lot more for you on today's edition of ADSW Live after this short break.